Hello everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith and in this unboxing video we are revisiting an absolute gem of a solo game. This is the Lord of the Rings, the living card game from Fantasy Flight Games. This is the revised edition. That's right. You'll see there in the bottom left hand corner of the box, way down at the bottom, it states for one to four players. That's already a, quite a difference from the original core box which allowed one to two players to play. So there's more cards in the box to allow more individuals individuals to become involved. There's also some quality of life improvements. The rule book has likely been tweaked as well and we're going to go through all those things. You're going to see them all up close so you can actually make an informed decision for yourself as to whether or not this core box is worth picking up or whether what you already have is sufficient enough. Now the thing I have to mention before I dig into this box which is typical of an unboxing is that this is one of three games that really sucked me into the solo gaming or board gaming hobby in general and this one is the most at fault for getting me into what I'm currently doing today which is a channel and that's because I spent an obscene amount of time playing this game logging plays tracking decks building decks to try and defeat scenarios within this game and to date have literally everything released inside of a gigantic storage solution which I put a video out for recently from Fancy But Functional that finally houses everything in one spot. The three games that started it all for me were Lord of the Rings The Living Card Game, Mage Knight, and the original Zombicide. All three had a part to play in dragging me, kicking and screaming potentially at the very beginning, into the solo gaming hobby, but very quickly turned around and said, you know what, there's something here. There is some kind of magic going on here, and there's a reason that I want to keep going back to the table to continue to play these games even when other people aren't around. I still enjoy playing games multiplayer but there's just something about the design of these games that were dragging me back to the table by myself and thus began my massive journey into solo gaming and now about 10 years later or so or a little bit more than that we have the revised version of the Lord of the Rings the living card game which is a pretty crazy thing to think about that over a decade has gone by and this game is still as relevant as it was back when it first released and still is holding the test of time in terms of its evergreen feeling in terms of it just not going away they're going to revise this thing they're going to bring it back they're reprinting things to allow players that never got a chance to experience it to get back into it and what better game to have a wonderful game design around than the ip of lord of the rings i mean it's a perfect pairing especially for people that love that ip it doesn't get any better than this game so i am truly excited if you cannot already tell to find out what's inside this box now I do realize that what you're about to see inside the box most of it most individuals that have been playing the LCG up until this point will have already acquired but there will be some things in here that are worth looking at that are considered new or tweaked or revised the back of the box states, in the Lord of the Rings, the card game, players assemble a band of adventurers who are attempting to complete dangerous quests in Middle Earth. From the bright fields of the Shire and the dangerous paths of Mirkwood Forest to the mighty kingdoms of Gondor and Rohan, the heroes of this beloved setting join together to resist the threat of the Dark Lord Sauron. The Lord of the Rings, the living card game, is a one to four player cooperative game in which players work together, competing against scenarios controlled by the game as a living card game additional cards and quests are available in future expansions further allowing players to customize the contents of the set or to create their own original decks and really the deck building aspect of lord of the rings living card game is one of its major major draws when you first open up the box, you're going to be greeted by the Learn to Play booklet, which of course will be much larger in size due to the fact the box here is bigger than the original core box that was released at the very beginning. We're going to go ahead and actually take a look at the inside of this, as I'm sure there's a whole bunch of you that are curious as to how it's laid out and structured now. Not only is there the Learn to Play guide, there's also the rules reference, and we'll look at both. The Learn to Play guide begins with the introduction, goes over the game overview, talks about the card game itself, and of course, the revised core set, some mentions in here. It includes enough player cards so up to four players can play the game simultaneously. It also includes at least one full play set of each of the player cards so that all the core deck customization options are available. And additionally, this product also introduces a new set of new boon, 
burden and campaign cards that are used to link the three core scenarios and create a cohesive campaign experience. As you'll remember from the original box, those three individual scenarios that you went through, well, first off, they were of varying difficulties for sure, but they were also segregated to be kind of one-off scenarios that you would try and go after. And you, of course, would deck build to try and succeed at them. In this way, with this revised set, they've tried to build a campaign so that newcomers coming to the game are not just playing three broken separated quests out in order to see if the game is for them. They actually have some type of campaign to go through. The other bonus that comes from revised editions typically is a walkthrough of all the content within the booklets themselves in terms of tweaking wording, restructuring, reformatting, and re-highlighting areas that are worth mentioning or potentially repeating for things that are very important. You're going to see this throughout the rulebook. Now you'll likely remember when I did my Arkham Horror LCG revised core box unboxing that there was revised setup instructions as well with that one, which were sorely needed as the original core game was actually quite tough to get through setup wise as most of it was just comprised of words now here fantasy flight has gone ahead with its setup and made it much more visual which makes it much easier for newcomers to experience the game and get into it the other advantage of the larger sized rule book is the fact that they can put larger illustrations inside of it larger pictures the font can actually increase making it just easier to consume it in general it's nice to see that near the back of the Learn to Play booklet, they have bolstered the deck building section, highlighted some things that are important, and added some more tips and considerations into the fray to help people on their first adventures. One of the new aspects of this revised core set is the campaign mode. Here are some pages talking about that. I'll go ahead and read the description in the top left hand corner for the mode. It states here to play the campaign mode, the players play through each scenario in order and then players advance to the next scenario after they have defeated the current scenario. And if the players lose one, there's no penalty, but they may or they must play it again and defeat it before they can advance to the next scenario. You got a campaign log, which is something that was not part of the the original core experience whatsoever. You're not tracking anything in that original game. You're just playing those as one-off scenarios. So you can see here, they put some effort into bringing some boons and burdens into this core experience to make the connection between the scenarios much more enjoyable. You have a full campaign setup checklist here on the left-hand side. Talk about the expert campaign mode, which you can add, the ending of a campaign and how you score, of course. The campaign log has a place for your player, your heroes, your fallen heroes, and threat penalties. You got notes, the scenario names you've completed and the scores you've got in the campaign pool. And of course, those boons and burdens listed. And on the very back, like every good rule book or learn to play guide, there is a quick reference here in terms of the round structure and keywords to keep an eye on. Now we move into the rules reference, and I won't be showing you a large majority of these pages as they're going to stay relatively the same. Essentially, going A to Z through a glossary of different terms, you're able to reference things within the game and written on cards, whether they're keywords or just words, in order to determine the defining meaning of them to help you to move through gameplay that much smoother. Now the bonus with this reference being larger is that it's easier to read this now versus the ones from the past. Moving towards the back end of this booklet is something very useful around timing and gameplay. And this is huge for newcomers to the game as it gives you a full on breakdown of the resource phase, planning phase, quest phase, travel phase, encounter phase, combat phase, and refresh phase. And believe me, there's quite a bit there the first time you run through the game, but once you get it into your head, it sticks and it stays and it doesn't come out. But this is certainly helpful in getting that process into your brain. And on the opposite page, we have them specific to combat. So enemy attack resolutions, player attack resolutions, and these kind of extras inside the rule books are huge benefits that the original players, like myself, didn't have when we were first learning. Next inside the box, all shrink wrapped, you're gonna find some punch boards. One thing you're gonna notice right off the bat, especially if you were coming from the original core boxes, is the tokens in terms of just the printing and how they look here on these punch boards is quite different. Also the dials that you use for tracking in the game have been basically made smaller, very similar to the limited special edition box that came out that had the tracker dials actually drop down in size. So they weren't so 
massive, which I actually really like because it makes it a lot por more portable, especially where you put cards into deck boxes and you might want to slip one of these trackers into a deck box behind some cards. You can bring it with you somewhere. Well, you can do that now, whereas the old ones were massive. They're almost two times to three times the size for literally no gain. So taking a look here, you can see those trackers. They're much smaller than they used to be, as I mentioned. And you've got some fives here as well for some of the major tokens in the game that you're going to be using. And this is what the backside looks like. Going on to the next set of tokens. I believe this has also seen an increase in size in terms of that marker that used to be about half the size of that. And that's about it. There's not a ton in terms of differences for the tokens, but there are a few. So once the punch boards and the booklets are out of the way, this is what you're going to see. You're going to see two sections here. This is very similar, again, to the Arkham Horror LCG structure, as well as what was implemented with Marvel Champions in their core box. This is really what it's following. And you've got the two decks, although these decks are actually packed much differently than I've seen before. Uh, and here we have some of the pieces you're gonna need in order to snap together the trackers that we, or the dials that we saw earlier. Inside of this location, we have a deck of cards here. There is another deck of cards just down below it. So it's two packs deep and likely the exact same over here. And plus, once you go ahead and remove all of this, you're gonna actually have some place to store some cards, which is again, something you couldn't do with the original core box, at least in a way that made any sense. So as you can see, you have lots of room to store future cards inside this box if you wish to. Now, for someone like me who has been on the bandwagon from the very beginning all the way till now, this doesn't really hold as much value for me. However, if you're a newcomer to the game, I mean, if I could rewind the tape and have this box versus the one that I got the first time, I would certainly take this one over the other one. Now let's go through the four bricks of cards. Many of these cards, the large majority of them are going to be familiar for everybody that has or had purchased the original core box from the past. There will be, of course, more of these cards than the prior core box, and there will be some cards that are brand new. So when we get to those brand new cards, I will slow down. We're also going to slow things down when we get to Gandalf because I know there's interest in how many of those cards are in this box.
And that, my friends, is going to wrap up this unboxing for the Lord of the Rings, the living card game from Fantasy Flight Games, the revised core. Really hope this helps you make an informed decision as to whether or not this is something you want to pick up, either as an existing player of the LCG or a newcomer to the LCG. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts were on this. And if you're not a part of our Patreon, Facebook group, or the Discord, definitely jump into one or all of those. Would love to see you there. Thanks again, and as always, keep on rolling solo.